Watercolor Pouring in Under 10 Minutes featuring Windsor and Newton watercolors on cold pressed paper with King Art finesse brushes. I taped my paper down to an artboard and I've blown up my reference photo. I taped the enlargement on the wall in front of me and have it big in order to be influenced by the shapes and colors. Adding a little water to my ramekins, I'll begin to mix my colors. I'll be mixing a sky blue color, a deep red color, and a golden yellow using colors off of my travel palette. Using a squeeze bottle, I'm just squeezing water directly onto the paper and moving it across with my paintbrush. I just double check to make sure that the entire paper is saturated. Using plastic pipettes, I start my first pour and I begin with the cerulean and cobalt blue mixture. Um, which I'm hoping will give the illusion of some clouds and sky in the background. And then I'm going to tone that down also with some golden yellow. Um, I really liked the golden yellow and um, blue contrast in my reference photo, so I'm uh, being influenced by those colors. Have a little drip tray here and we'll pour the excess into the tray. Uh, try to pour in diagonals and not um, horizontally or vertically. I just find that this is more of a natural way of pouring and when I've poured um, horizontal or vertical, when, I, um, when I'm done with the painting, it, it doesn't, uh, it's not as aesthetically pleasing as the diagonals. Just checking my colors and making sure there's no puddling or excess water. Um, to avoid blooms and I'm really happy with the way that those those clouds um, formed on this pour be a great background I'm gonna swatch uh, and mix a second round of colors for my second pour this time a dusty orange color a olive a bright olive green and a cerulean blue mix the green is a mix of Hooker's green and a little bit of the burnt sienna. Uh, the cerulean blue is just straight cerulean blue with a little tiny bit of the cobalt blue deep added to it. And my orangey color is the perlene maroon and burnt sienna. Once that first pour was completely dry, I'm beginning my second, but this one I'm using bold brush strokes to imitate nature and begin to add stems and leaves and twigs and foliage using the clean water um, on my brush and then using the plastic pipettes will uh, drop in color uh, to continue this all the way down from top to bottom. Um, I have my board on the slightest bit of an angle just to keep, to try and keep <laughs> puddling from happening. I switch from the different styles of brushes. I have a liner brush, an angle shader brush, and a round brush to get a variation of strokes. Add some line work to imitate stems and branches. I use the angle shader brush to create more jagged leaves and also the round brush just to add a variation in the thickness and width of the stems and branches. This layer is building up beautifully against the sky blue colors and cloud effects that that first pour gave to this painting. This was really fun to do, very expressive. Definitely going to have to um, add a few splatters here and there. When I splatter, I often use pure pigment, so in this case, pure perylene maroon, pure cobalt. I also take a tissue paper and just dab the edges of it into any puddles that form and do a real gentle rock on this one because I don't want the colors to muddy and I want to see if I can create some color separations. Lately I've been mixing granulating colors and I've noticed that as it dries sometimes you get color separations where one color will pull from the other and create interesting blends. On this painting, I noticed that this light green uh, definitely pulled out of the blue areas. The 
cobalt blue deep and the cerulean are both very strong saturated colors and also granulating so they create some great effects for instance my clouds from first pour are still showing through even with all this foliage painted over it going back to my reference photos i'm looking at the shapes and I'm also looking at that first art prep painting I did before on how I was able to lift, even though I didn't save any white or do any masking, I was able to lift the flowers back through stencil lifting. So I'm planning on cutting my own stencils and doing um, stencil lifting to add the these flowers and lighter areas of foliage to the painting. Today I'll be using the Duralar film to cut my stencils because I don't have any actual stencil blanks here at home and I'll be experimenting with this and trying to figure out the best way to cut them. I have a couple of heat tools here uh, but first I'm going to cut my film into uh, smaller pieces. I'm planning on doing three different stencils, one being the actual pollen and then the stems and also some of the buds. I added this clip to show you how I burnt myself. <laughs> so these tool guns are not, um, are, are not for me. I'm, it, it really gave me a good burn. So I'm just gonna try using these Tim Holtz scissors <laughs> and see um, how this goes. So having drawn my designs with a simple Sharpie marker and then cutting them out with these little scissors, I was no longer in danger <laughs> of injury and um, although tedious and time consuming, I think it'll be worth it. Now for some stencil lifting. So applying my uh, new handmade stencils firmly onto the paper and using a wet toothbrush, I gently lift and then blot with the uh, tissue paper and I'll just repeat this. and keep moving around the paper and loosely following my reference photo but at this point I'm enjoying this so much I've just uh, I'm letting myself uh, look at the painting and use my imagination and uh, really just immerse myself into the experience and enjoy the process of this painting I made myself a promise this year that I would no longer approach each painting in you know a direct engineer minded way you know as far as needing to have everything planned and everything plotted out and instead to use my references as just that a reference but uh, instead allowing my brush strokes and techniques and style to emerge and uh, to really allow each painting to be uh, an, an experience to enjoy and I have to say this painting really adhered to that promise I made myself by just playing with the pores and watching the colors blend and <laughs> going absolutely crazy with these stencils oh my goodness I, I enjoyed it from beginning to end and I'm really excited for what 2021 will hold as I incorporate this this thinking into my future paintings. I would love to hear what you think. I went ahead and ordered some non-heat <laughs> stencil cutting tools to do more projects like this. And anyways, thank you all for subscribing, commenting, and liking this video. Your support is incredible. Thanks again for watching.